Hey, welcome back to the Manlyhood Mancast. This is our special Halloween edition. So this is part two of our series called Blood and Guts, where we're going to talk about the grosser things in life. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. To be a good man, you have to learn and grow. You have to be bold and stand firm on your convictions. You have to live with honor and integrity. This is the Manlyhood Mancast. Here's your host, Josh Atcher. Hey man, I see you. I see your fire going out. I see your marriage barely holding on. I know you're broke, wore out, and at the end of your rope. I've been there, it sucks. Sucks the spark right out of you. Till all you have is a pile of wet wood. It feels like it's never gonna burn. I can't fix your problems. I can't make her love you again. I can't lose 50 pounds for you or fill your bank account. But I can remind you of who you are. I can share some of my fire. I can help you make a plan to get your life back on track. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's reignite our lives. There's a lot at stake. No one wants their marriage to end in divorce. No one wants to wallow in despair or to the dark places that follow. So let's do it. Let's reignite our lives. Let's reignite our passion, our marriage, our health, our career, our dreams, our mindsets. Get reignite today. We're going to talk a little bit about some things that are gross and scary, just like when you were kids and you always had fun that Halloween week with some skeletons or with some bowls of peeled grapes that you had to stick your hands in and they pretend they were eyeballs. We're going to talk about gross stuff today, okay? And I want you to know as we do it, yes, I understand. A lot of people have issues with Halloween. They're like, oh, it's the devil's day. I don't care. I don't believe that. I don't worship the devil. He doesn't own any days, okay? So I just want to get that out of the way in case anybody's like, I'm unsubscribing because he worships the devil. I do not. I don't like the devil. I love Jesus, okay? So just making that clear. But I do like to talk about some of these things that are gross, some of these things that are uncomfortable, some of these things that are weird, that are scary, because I do believe that even in those dark things, we can find light. We can find the good things. And we have to learn to do that sometimes. So guys, this is part two of Blood and Guts, and we're going to talk about Testicles. <laughs> Testicles are gross. I have a friend who always eats the weird stuff on the menu, and he went somewhere and had Rocky Mountain oysters, which are basically bull testicles, and I'm like, dude, you're nuts. Like, what do they taste like? He said exactly what you would think they would taste like. Okay, nope, I'm not eating that. <laughs> but, um, you know, how many times have you heard somebody say, man, he's got balls, right? When they're talking about someone who has courage or guts or the ability to say what needs to be said even though it's going to cost him something or the or the lack of fear and the desire to do something that is out of the ordinary or something that is scary or life-threatening you've heard the the phrase intestinal fortitude which basically means he's got guts so i like to kind of put a little twist on that and say testicular fortitude which means he's got balls now Again, I hate to always give disclaimers here, but I want to make something very clear. I know some women who have more testo testicular fortitude than any man I've ever known. Okay? Just letting you know that. I know some women who have a lot of courage and have a lot of balls. Okay? We are not going to deny that that exists. We are not going to downplay or denigrate women. But I'm talking to you today about men. Because that's what this is. This is a podcast for men. So... If you're a lady that's listening or watching and you're like, oh, well, he does, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you guys know where I stand on that, okay? But today we're talking about men and we're talking about having testicular fortitude. We're talking about having that, that ability to overcome fear by sheer force of will. My brother, my little brother, little Jake at the time, he's like big Jake now, but he was not afraid of anything. He had like the most testicular fortitude of anybody I ever knew. And I remember, you know, being a teenager and we went camping up at a stone quarry and he and his buddy decided to, like, surf down this cliff of shale on top of a big piece of flagstone. They were just surfing down the... And they're going down and the, the, the big rock hits another rock and flips over 
takes a chunk out of his hand, and he's bleeding all over, and, you know, I mean, it scared him a little bit, but he, the dude's crazy. When he was little, he was riding his bicycle, and uh, we were riding together. He could ride his bicycle before I could, by the way. He taught me how, because he wasn't afraid of anything when we were kids. And so we went to uh, this hill that was across the street from our house, and we were driving down it. He's probably about three or four, I think. And he hits a, a pipe, and he loses control of his handlebars. When he comes down, his handlebars hit him right in the junk. And, <laughs> you know, Mom takes him to the hospital, and the doctor's like, look, he needs to take it easy for a few days. He didn't damage anything. He's going to be bruised. He's going to be uncomfortable. So you need to take him home and just have him lay down, put ice on it, and relax. When we get home, and uh, Mom's doing dishes, and she looks out the window, and there's Jake. He had climbed on top of the swing set and was running back and forth on the bar on top of the swing set. <laughs> and she said, Jake, go ride your bike. <laughs> because it was less dangerous than whatever else it was he decided to do. That was my brother. That's Jake. He's still kind of like that. Maybe not quite as much now that he's got a wife and kids. But his kids are like that. So uh, I guess that runs in the families. But kids, guys, you know, kids don't always know what's going to hurt them. So sometimes they don't have a whole lot of fear. Uh, as we grow up, we start to become a little more sensible, and we start to think about how things might turn out. Uh, we lose some of our indestructible thinking, I think is the, the psychological term they use to describe that lack of fear that kids have, where they'll, they're uh, informed to make risky decisions, because they don't care. They don't know that they could get hurt. Honestly, I have heard it said that your brains aren't fully developed until you're the age of 25, and the last thing to get developed is that uh, portion of your brain that identifies risk, which is why young people, young adults even, will make risky decisions and not know or care. Now, I know every time I've said that to somebody who's like tw like 18 to 25, they're like, ah, you don't know me, ah, and they get all offended because I tell them their brain's not fully developed, but it's true. Your brain's not fully developed until you're 25 years old. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So now if you do something stupid, you can blame it on your lack of brain power. It's all good. <laughs> But guys, we're talking about having that courage, having that testicular fortitude to do the right thing, to do something that takes a risk, to do something that, t that, that you wouldn't do if you only used your brain to process it. If you only used your brain to process it and you looked at the logic, would it say, hey, get married young and have kids young? No, because your brain's like, no, I should wait till I have made my fortune and can afford to pay for them. <laughs> you know? But it takes guts to raise a family. Starting a business. that you Maybe there's a business that you want to start. That takes uh, something more than just logic and reason. It takes the ability to step outside of yourself and say, this is a risk and I'm willing to take it because we're going to do good things. I'm going to succeed. You can't do that without that testicular fortitude. <laughs> uh, you know, in Spanish, they say cojones, right? What is that that drives you to do the right thing? The guys, it's important that if you're going to act out of that deep, sheer inner strength that comes from testicular fortitude or guts or whatever you want to call it, if you're going to act out of that, make sure that you have your principles clearly defined, your core values clearly defined, that you know your purpose, you know your mission, you know what you will and will not do because it's right or wrong. You know those things. Because if you're being driven by sheer courage, courage is not a good driver. Courage will make you jump off the wrong cliff and smash to a bloody pulp. Now, principles, okay, core values will make sure that if you do it, that you know that you're going to be okay. It might not be a simple decision. It'll make sure at least, at the very least, that you're jumping off the right cliff. All right? It'll make sure that you've got a plan in place. It'll make sure that you know who you are before you uh, jump off that cliff and jump into a risk. Guys, I just want to encourage you that it's okay if you are still in the process of figuring these things out. It's okay if you don't know what your values are. It's okay if you don't know what your purpose is. But I want to encourage you that it's not okay to stay there. You've got to learn that stuff. You've got to develop that stuff because just acting out of sheer courage without any guiding principles, that's not winning. You've got to know 
what it is you care about and where it is you want to go. And how do you build courage? How do you build testicular fortitude? You do it by taking a small risk and then succeeding. Or maybe even failing and realizing it wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be. There was actually a place uh, where I went to college where there was like this dam. It was on the James River in Lynchburg. And uh, this spillway would go, the you know, water just kind of spilled over and there was a dam. And it was deep at the bottom, but there was a lot of rocks. And kids would always go and jump off. And I think it's actually illegal now. But we would, it might have been illegal then, but we did it anyway. Uh, our brains weren't fully developed. Just saying. <laughs> But I went with, uh, she was my fiance then, but I went with Zoe to that spot and we climbed up on the edge and our buddy just jumped off. And then he swam under the water, swam underneath the spillway and was hiding behind the waterfall and he didn't come up. He thought it was funny. I wasn't planning on jumping. Zoe wasn't planning on jumping. We thought we were going to, we'd get there. We're like, no, we chickened out until my buddy was missing. Because we knew it was dangerous, because you knew there were rocks. Because if you went under, you could kind of feel them around you. You know, you had a very narrow place that you would jump into. And so, um, my buddy was missing now. He didn't come up. And so, like, we're like, we're going. So we both jumped in, and we're like, calling his name. We're looking for him. And we hear him laughing behind the waterfall. <laughs> and, you know, then as we were leaving, as we were walking up, uh, the path that walked up, there was like blood all over because somebody had apparently gotten hurt and cut themselves. We we're like, yeah, this is a really bad idea. Pretty sure we did it three or four more times after that, but um, because our brains weren't fully formed. But the point is, I cared more about making sure my friend was okay than I did my, my fear. And so when it comes to overcoming fear and acting in courage, um, you have to do the thing. And there has to be something that motivates the thing. Don't just do it out of recklessness. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Do it because you know that taking this risk will have a great reward. And I think that that's going to make you stronger. And you, if you want to build that, you do little things. And you keep doing it until you aren't afraid of that anymore. You're not afraid of that risk. You're not afraid of that failure. And maybe you screw up and you mess up. And then you learn from that and you can do it again. Like riding your bike. I guess my point, guys, is if you want to have testicular fortitude, it starts with, yes, stepping up to the plate and taking a risk. But even that is done best within the context of you knowing who you are and what matters to you. And I think if you know that and if you have that framework, taking a risk, it's nothing. Taking a risk is not anywhere near as scary if you know who you are and you know what matters to you. And... If you do have to take a risk, and it is scary, once you've done it, hey, I've already done this. I can do this. I can do anything. Anyway, guys, that's my podcast for you today. Stay tuned because part three is going to be coming up, and we're going to talk about some more blood and guts. Guys, if you are appreciative of the stuff we're doing here at the Manly Hood Mancast, I want you to go to our website, uh, manlyhood.com slash reignite, and you can... Uh, get our reignite resource that we have available for you for uh it's it's really affordable it's gonna help you out and some swag some t-shirts hoodies stuff like that i care about you guys i love you guys and i'll see you next time if you want to be a better man check out our website manlyhood.com for blogs videos and more from our manlyhood team and you can also join our private Facebook group, Manlyhood Man Cave, where you can meet up with a band of brothers who will challenge you and help you on your journey of manhood. This episode is produced by Hatcher Media for Manlyhood.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. Tune in again for more of the Manlyhood Mancast.